So today I have the pleasure of introducing Steve Garfield to you guys. Steve is a master of putting video on the web in an engaging manner. He's the author of Get Seen, Online Video Secrets to Building Your Business. He is the founder of Boston Media Makers, and this is his talk on effective storytelling through video. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy it very much. And please join me in welcoming Steve Garfield. Thank you all for coming. I don't have any numbers, but I might need to take measures. Is there one in here somewhere? Big <laughs> one. So my name is Steve Garfield, and uh, my website is stevegarfield.com if you want to follow me, uh, Steve Garfield on Twitter. And today's session, oh, well this is actually, <laughs> my, so I clicked on, on this, this happens to be my blog, it's called Off on a Tangent, because it's about a million different things. I was talking to Leander earlier about um, the benefits of starting a blog, so um, you know, how to get known. So I think starting a blog is a great idea. How many people have blogs by a show of hands? Okay. Um, it's great to get known for the, what you're looking at doing. So um, let's say you're interested in marketing. If you start a marketing blog and start writing about it, you can get some visibility. But what if you don't know if you want to go into marketing or public relations? So I was talking to Leander. I was like, well, why don't you start a blog about deciding between marketing and public relations, <laughs> and you can be the guy who's writing about that. And then you mentioned you just heard someone from Google speak. Drop, send him an email, say, hey, I heard you speak the other day. I got a couple questions for you. Can you answer them from my blog? He emails back. Now you have thought leaders on your blog, and it's something that people will come to. So my blog is off on a tangent. They can come to my blog from any number of things. And the, the top story on my blog from yesterday is um, I went to New York and I visited a behind the scenes of the Today Show. So this is just a sample of what uh, is on my blog. And I'm using a tool called Storify to tell the story. How many people know Storify? A couple people? You should check out Storify. It's storify.com. And it helps you build a blog post out of individual media pieces. So one of my ways of telling stories is to take individual moments taken together, tell a story. So this is my story of my visit to the Today Show, and it has my Flickr photos, and it's all, all behind the scenes. It was very fun. It was a lot warmer inside the studio than it was where they hang out outside. It was 30 degrees. And, um, oh, so here's a little video that I've added to my stream of video moments, and that's using a tool called Vine on the iPhone. How many people have that? Okay, so that's some of the things I'm going to talk about. Let's go back to the presentation. And I'm going to start off with some more examples, uh, talk about the problems of putting video online, requirements of good video, and then I'm going to share some tools that I use, which I have laid out here on the table, and then some applications I use to create video. How many people are uh, video creators? You? Okay. So the goal is, after this session, you'll be able to leave here and use some of these tools to go out and create video. So here's some examples to start. Uh, for the blizzard that we just have, actually this is in Jamaica Plain, part of Boston here. It was so cool with no cars on the road. It was just amazing. So I did some blogging and um, videoing of the blizzard. And there's this one thing that we call, how many people know the French toast alert? It's when people rush out to get Good eggs, right. milk, yeah. bread, right? You call it the French toast alert. It's on this um, site called Universal Hub in Boston, and it actually has different levels. So we were at severe French toast alert. <laughs> I went to Whole Foods, and, ag and again, um, well actually on this one I just embedded each one. So here's my Vine video, which is Vine is a six second video. So people want to know the correct length of how long the video has to be. In this case, six seconds. Bread, there's a parking lot, milk, eggs. Bread, milk, eggs, that was my story. And actually on the news, people were like, where do I get bread, milk, and eggs? 
there's none in my store. So this, I put it out on Twitter, Facebook, it got shared. People were like, oh, Whole Foods in Jamaica Plain has bread milk and eggs. <laughs> there's the milk. They just got a huge shipment. Bread, eggs, cases and cases of eggs. No bread and eggs. And the other thing I did during the blizzard is this live um, front porch cam. I so saw that. that. I saw that. I, well, I found that when I was, I'm from Connecticut. Oh. And I was like, what's going on? And I found your, that. Live from Boston <laughs> Blizzard. <laughs> my live cam front porch. So every time I'm creating media with the idea of what is it that people want to see, that's kind of how I think when I create these things. So for Blizzard, I'm thinking, well, I'll do a live cam. So this is my front porch. I took um, I attached a yardstick to show, you know, what I was expecting to come. And then I have the live cam turned on. And this is what it looks like from in my living room. So this is the camera I use. So here's the first tool that you could get and, and tell stories. This is a, called the drop cam. It's like, $99, $150. What you do is you plug it into the wall, and you plug it into the um, internet, and you go onto your computer, and you link to it, and you add it to your network. And that's it. And then you get a page where you can control the camera. Turn it on, turn it off. And then it gives you a URL where you can send people to, or embed it. I mean, that's it. That's simple. So now everybody can live stream on the next storm from their house, which is, you better go buy one right now, order on Amazon, direct ship, and have it come to your house. So there, so there it is. I um, added a light out my window overnight, and then in the morning, they got light to somewhere around two feet, and then I shut it off. That was its life. <laughs> and so it did its job, because you saw it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So also, interrupt me at any time and ask questions. You might think of something, just shout it out and ask, and you'll forget it. And I hope to get to questions at the end. So that's my live drop cam. Next is Vine. Vine video reports from the Blizzard. Um, as seen on CNN. So these. Fine videos. I even use an iPhone 5. The quality is amazing. I am just amazed at how great the quality. Oh, I want to turn the lights down so you can see the So I'm going crazy taking all these vines, and um, CNN tweets out. Are you on Vine? Steve Garfield has some good Blizzard videos like this one. Join in and send all your reports to CNN iReport. So, um, you guys know what CNN iReport is? How many people know what that is? Great way to get seen with CNN iReport. And they've made it really easy now. They have, or if you go to CNN.com, you can sign up for iReport. And you can send stories into CNN and they get on the iReport website, which is the user-generated content. And um, it's not filtered, no one looks at it, just everything goes up. Then, the web producers look at everything that's being sent in to CNN iReport, and they can choose those that they like to be put on the web. Then, the CNN TV producers look at the selected iReports that have gotten onto the web, and they can choose to put them on TV. So. This is a way that you can get your video seen on CNN, and it, in this case, it can only be, it only has to be a six-second video. Short story: My niece was getting married uh, up in Maine, and there was Hurricane Kyle was going to hit the day of her wedding, and I was in Maine, and I didn't have any. Um, I was in the car that day. I had my laptop with my webcam. I went to the coast. I took up my, took the laptop, and I 
recorded myself with the webcam. I says, here I am on the coast of Maine. Hurricane Kyle's going to hit. And I took the webcam and I pulled it around and I went like this and took a picture of the ocean, sent it. And then I drove to the um, Maine library and I uploaded the report to CNNI report. And so then um, at breakfast the next day, I'm sitting with the whole family and my cell phone rings. <laughs> And I go, oh, excuse me, it's CNN. <laughs> CNN called me, to, you know, they called to verify. Yeah, it's there, no, no, And so that got on CNN. So um, I can't guarantee that your videos will get on CNN, but they'll never get on if you don't send stuff in. Oh, and the point of the story is, when I first started, you had to go to the CNNI report website and send things in and, and sign in. And it was a little cumbersome because that wasn't my normal workflow. I would just th put it on YouTube or put it on Twitter. Now, what you do when you send something into CNN Report is you can just tag it on Twitter as um, hashtag CNN Report and they'll see it. It's, it's a lot more transparent. So if you have anything that you think is newsworthy, just do that. So that's that example. And any questions so far? How are we doing? Good? Yep. Okay. So I started blogging in 1997, kind of before there was blogging. Uh, I was a producer on a morning radio show in Boston, Eagle 937, with Carlson McKenzie. And does anybody know who that is? Nope. Kathy Griffin. Uh I know, really? Yikes. So, um, every day guests came in and I wanted to have a web page where I could link to like a CD or a book or a movie or a TV show that they were talking about. So I made up a web page and I coded it with HTML, put the page up, and then the next day someone new would come in, they'd go into the code, copy that, paste it on top, change the date, and change the text, and I'd have my next posting. There, there was no blogging back then, so that's what I was doing in 97. Then in 2000, Blogger came out, and I was like, whoa, all I have to do is key in a title and just the text and hit publish, and it's up. So I moved to Blogger. So that's my history in blogging. And then January 1st, 2004, I like to do a New Year's resolution. And I said, well, you know, Blogger made it so easy to put text on the web. Why isn't anybody making it easy to put video on the web? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try putting video in a blog. So I made up this one, Steve Garfield's video blog. And I went to the Apple website, figured out how to embed video. And I made this Steve Garfield's video blog, and this is my first video. January 1st, 2004, it's the year of the video blog. <laughs> okay, maybe eight years early. <laughs> there, was no, there was no YouTube because YouTube came out like in the end of 2005. So I had to figure out where to post these videos. That cost money if people watch. So I was a little nervous that maybe the video would become popular and then it would start costing me money. <laughs> um, the uh, Democratic National Convention came to Boston and I did a report of my own every day and those things started to get popular and I was all you know, concerned about it. Um, so the point about that was I started the video blog and I was experimenting, put a video up, and then in the, in the description of the blog post I would say, okay, this is the camera I used, and this is you know, how I embedded it, and this is the size I made, and on all my posts, I would teach and explain things, and I was giving out all kinds of information. Um, and then there was a Yahoo group that started with other people who were also interested in figuring out how to put video on the web. There were a handful of us, and by the end of 2004, there were um, you know, hundreds of us trying to figure this out together, and one day, um, one of the guys on the list said, hey, I'm going to New York. You want to meet? And the person from Chicago says, oh, I want to meet you too. And I was like, well, I'm in Boston. I can fly up to New York. And we had
had been watching all each other's videos, we went and we were talking about how to do it all, so we went to meet, so we got 95 people together wow. in um, January of 2005. We met in New York City, we gave it a name, we called it VloggerCon. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we, we met, like that first time, we would come up to the person and say, I feel like I already know you. <laughs> it's kind of, what is going on here? And what are we, this was new, right? And when we were putting up those videos, there weren't web series, there wasn't brand sponsors, there wasn't anything. We, people were cooking spaghetti and showing their kids, and it was just, we were just tech practicing with the thing. And what we realized was that we were sharing moments from our lives, and that allowed us to really get to know the other people. So as we were meeting each other, we were like, wow. I feel like I know you, so that is a lesson that I bring today when I talk to you know, companies. I'm like, guys, if you want people to feel like they know you, get out there and, and do video. We, we just saw how powerful that was. So that was 2005, and so that was my first video blog. Then, um, Jimmy Fallon, Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, how many people know Jimmy Fallon? I think every hand should probably you know, <laughs> at this point. Yeah. So in uh, December of 2008, Jimmy Fallon didn't have Late Night with Jimmy Fallon yet. He just got the show, so he made up a video blog and he did behind the scenes. And each day he'd do a video. Here we are, this is what the set's going to be like. Can you guys help us figure out what the show logo is going to be? And it was really, here are the, here are the writers, and it was, it was just great. So the first. Um, video that he put up, he said, I'm going to put up a new video blog every day. So as someone who kind of invented video blogging, and he had a big microphone, I was like, I don't want him to be saying it wrong. He's not putting up a new video blog every day, because that would mean a new URL, a whole new site. He's putting up a new video on his blog. So I sent that in as a comment <laughs> <laughs> to him, and he saw it. So I'm going to show you. What, what happened here? The first is my video, which I already saw. January 1st, 2004. It's the year of the video blog. Hi, everybody. It's December 8th, 2008, and welcome to Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. This is the first installment of the nightly blog, or vlog, if you want to use that word. Uh, and we're going to have one here every night here at 1230. Okay, so I'm so excited. Our, our first video went up last night uh, on the web blog. I want to thank Steve Garfield who commented. We're getting comments already. This is exciting. Steve Garfield said that it's not, we're not web blogging every night. The whole thing is a web blog and we're adding videos. Thank you for the correction. Uh, <laughs> that looks like the video uh, comments that you're putting in here. These questions. The first one up is from Steve Garfield, our old pal. <laughs> I love the behind the scenes stuff and I'm excited at the possibility for you including content from people formerly known as the audience. What are you going to do with that? How are you going to include us? Thanks a lot. Thanks, that's a good question, Steve Garfield. We want to use the audience as much as we possibly can. The, the, we're doing for the webisodes. This will carry over to our show. I'm a big fan of what Colbert did with the green screen challenge, what you guys did with the McCain video and stuff like that. I think it's awesome. So. Whatever's coming out, whatever, however we can incorporate technology with and, and the audience and, and our show, it, you will be on the show. Uh, it's going to be fun. This is going to be great. Thanks. Good question. So that was pretty fun. Uh, so then um, time passes, <laughs> and I went, went out to the Consumer Electronics Show. It just so happened that Jimmy Fallon was there with... Okay, so Gary, thanks for being here. Um, you know, it was a year ago that you spoke at the Marketing Cross Digital Marketing Mixer out of Arizona. Okay. So I'm at CES, Jimmy Fallon was also at CES. I go over to the NBC booth, and I'm like, hey, Jimmy Fallon, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we do a quick interview, he goes, hey, Steve Garfield, <laughs> my old pal. <laughs> So I got an interview with him at CBS. That was fun. And then, like, is Rob in here? Rob did a great job talking about user-generated content and sending in stuff. 
with Doritos and everything. I love that. So uh, we're going to get to some of the tools that you can use to do that thing. And even if you don't uh, use the tools to do video, and I strongly think that you should, if you start working for a company that wants to have user-generated content, you really should know exactly all the steps and how to do these things. So he had a um, late night super fan supercut by the Gregory Brothers. They auto tune the news. You know, they take people who do the news and they make them sing. So Jimmy Fallon had that and he said, send in your videos. So I'm like, okay, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> you ask, I'm going to do it. So I did a video and um, my wife is downstairs saying, what is that noise upstairs? What are you doing? Um, so this is the late night super fan super cut video that ended up being put together and I ended up being the thumbnail. <laughs> you go to late night with Jimmy Fallon and the, the super cut and there I, this is what you see. <laughs> so I'll just play um, the beginning so you can see what this looks like. The Super Bowl is this weekend and in honor of that we wanted to try a cool interactive experiment with you guys at home. So we asked you to get dressed up in your favorite football stuff, t-shirt, jersey, Face paint, body paint, whatever. And uh, send in a video telling us why you love your team so much. And then say, woo, for the camera. Uh, we got tons of videos here. Funny ones, weird ones, some with kids, some with dogs. One with a dude that had plungers on his nipples. <laughs> it was crazy. And then we asked the Gregory Brothers, these are the super talented guys behind Auto Tune the News, uh, to take the videos, put them all together, and make a song out of it. And as promised, we're going to unveil it right now. So here it is, the late night super fan super cut. <laughs> All right, 
great. So that's some examples. Now let's go into um, problems, what makes a good video, and then we'll look at the tools. OK? Sounds good? Uh, what's some problems that people have in, in making videos? Like, why don't videos get made? Anybody? Yeah. Shut it up. Technical problems, yeah. They oh. sometimes look really gray and cheesy. They, they don't look good enough, maybe? Yep. Yeah. Any other problems? I think it's just sometimes a confidence thing. <coughs> that people are very camera shy. People are camera shy, yep. Yeah. Yeah. They don't feel like they want to be on camera. So you can make videos and not be on camera. It's a way to get around that, put other people on camera, or do um, you know screen grabs of showing things on your computer and just do a voiceover or just inter interview other people. So there's a lot of ways to do videos without um, actually you being in the video. Or even just doing maybe a blog of videos that you like that other people make and curate, like we heard earlier. So some of the problems, uh, well, nothing gets done that costs too much and people strive for perfection. So nothing ever gets done a lot of times, let's say in a company, they'll say, we want to have a video. So here's a budget. You're in charge. Hire this third party to make our video. They come in. What's the video going to be about? They work on it. Make the video. Project manager likes it. She shows it to management. Management says, that isn't what I wanted. Go back and change it. And the company gets sold. And then and I still want to get paid because I did that first video, and then it never, never gets done. That's one example. Uh, cost too much. You, know, you think some people think that you need to have the best camera, all the audio equipment, huge lighting, sound to, to make a video, but I'm here to dispel that. Um, and people strive for perfection, thinking it has to be perfect to get out on the web. Here I am just using an iPhone Cinegram and put the thing up, and it gets wildly popular. So people sometimes will um, look at the content over quality if it's timely and you know it, it, it tells a story. So I wouldn't really worry about being perfect. I don't. I don't worry. <laughs> uh, requirements for good video. This is a class I taught for Kodak, and everybody here has a Kodak. CI8 HD little um, video camera. So to have a good video, um, tell a story with your video. A lot of times when I'm doing a quick little story, I'll think, um, what's, what's my story? Beginning, middle, end. So a lot of times it's like, I'll have a camera right in front of me. I'm like, hey, it's Steve Garfield. I'm going to PR advance today. Here's everybody. And go visit me at Steve Garfield. That's my beginning, middle, and end. Real quick, simple. I think that was the story we want to tell me how to do. Audio. So audio is very important, uh, even maybe more important than good video. Although it's hard to make bad video these days because this on iPhone 5 is like HD quality video. So if I'm taking a video with this iPhone and I'm shooting. Whatever camera you're, you're using, you need to be aware of where the microphone is. If I'm in a big, huge you know, conference room and everyone's mingling and I'm trying to take a video of someone over here, that's not going to be good because it's noisy and you're far away and that's not just going to work. So I always think of, for audio, what's the environment? Let's say I wanted to interview you, I'd say, you know what, can you just take a minute? We'll go up in the hallway to a quieter space. That's going to help a lot. Another thing I'll do is um, I'll know where the microphone is, and if I want to narrate a piece, I'll hit record, and then I'll talk directly into the microphone like this. Here we are at BU, and you know, look at all this great stuff. So my audio is going to be perfect, because I know you know how to record the mic's right there. Does anybody sell a shotgun mic for the iPhone? Uh, yeah, you, you can. So the answer to that is there's an adapter that you can get for the audio in jack, hmm. and I have it. Um, if you go to stevegarfield.com, there's a link to all the gear I use, and then within that there's another link that has all kinds of gear, and what it is is a plug that goes in the mic jack, and then it gives you a jack to stick in any kind of microphone like a shotgun. 
but you, you can. Um, so light, my simple way to shoot the video with good light is like if we were in this room and we wanted to shoot, well then I bring the lights up, but even better than that, I pull up that line and I walk the person way up to there and I'd stand with my back towards the window and have the sunlight come in on the person. That would be my perfect solution. So I'm always looking at my environment for where's the light. And the motion on video, you know, you could put someone on video and they could be talking like this, telling you their story, but you need to pop it up a little the video. And actually, when I go on video, I'm, it's like a little different. It's the same me, but I'm, you know, have more motion. And that's how I think of it when I'm recording a video. And when people are watching the video, they want to have one or more emotions be affected by the video. Sadness, you know, happy, sad. You know, if you make someone feel something, that will help you make it. So, so now let's get into the tools. Tools I use. Okay, so first, the newest thing I have uh, is this is a Logitech C920 webcam. This is the best webcam out there. It does 1080p HD video, and it's fairly new. Everybody on Google Plus is recommending this as the best one. And I, um, the box says it only works on a PC, but it does work on a Mac. And I have Logitech to send me a couple so I can try them. The cool thing about it is that on the bottom it has a tripod mount. So you can, you can use this as your camera on a tripod for a shoot. The older webcam should have to get duct tape and <laughs> tape it on and try and make it, and it would fall over half the time. And this, so the, having this on here, it's the only one I know that has it, is really good. And the, the quality um, is better than the, uh, the Mac EyeSight camera. It lets in a lot of light. It's, it's really great. So that's my preferred webcam. Oh, and here's an example. Um, do you guys know the web show This Week in Tech by uh, Leo Laporte? Anybody? Yep. So he has a huge video network, is very successful, makes a lot of money at it, and they have a lot of tech shows. And this one show they have every Friday afternoon is called The Social Hour. And uh, Sarah Lane and Amber MacArthur are the hosts. Happened to know them through going to conferences all these years, and I decided I wanted to try and you know, be on their show, and I thought a good way to do that was to make a video for them. So I made this video about Vine, which I've told you about. It's like the iPhone that does the six-second videos, and I sent this in. And I was watching the show, and they started talking about Vine, and they made, made like a, a second point about Vine. Third point about Bob, and I was like, oh, I'm not going to use my video. And I was like, sad, because it's kind of a joke video, and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe my humor just isn't like what they like. I'll try again next week. You know, that, oh, you know, but I really thought it was funny. And then Sarah Lane says, and we have one more thing, it's a video by Steve Garfield. Oh. So this is the video as they're talking about mine, the six second video. This week I've been experimenting with Vine. It limits you to only six seconds per video. This week I've been experimenting with Vine. It limits you to only six seconds per video. This week I've been experimenting with Vine. It I thought it was funny, but I was He's questioning my, my sense of humor, and I'm like, I think they just have the same sense of humor. But then they liked it, and it was happy. So, uh, it was a big success. So, I'll try and send more in. You know, so, this, these video shows, they all want content. So, if you have an interest, you know, in something that they're talking about, or might be talking about in the future, make a video and send it in, because their show is a half hour, an hour, and last year I did an um, hour-long live show for the Pulse Network, a weekly live show. It's a lot of time to fill with content, so if someone is going to take time to 
a little video and send it in. That's a good way for you to uh, get seen. And it's also a good experience, too. Even if it doesn't get used, you can, you know, as you continually make them, you get better. better. So that was done with the, um, the C920 webcam. And then I also had an a Audio, -Technic, Audio Technica USB microphone. So I wasn't using the mic on my laptop. I had an external mic, which made the audio perfect. And then I had lights. Actually, I'll tell you about that. I had this light. This is a Micro Pro. batteries in it. It's a Micro Pro LED light. It's got like 100 LEDs in it. I have that on one side of me, putting like this way. Then I have my desk lamp, which is an LED lamp. And I have that coming at me this way. And the reason I have two lights is this light, when it comes at me this way, it casts a shadow on this side of my face. So the other light takes away that shadow, so I have two. And then the third one I have is this Home Depot, one of those $5 metal ones, and I have that, and I uh, make that go up on my bookcase, and then that gets really bright. So the quality has great lighting, great audio, um, hopefully the content is okay. And so when I send that in, that might get chosen because they want their show to look good. So those are all reasons why I do them as well. I have a quick question about the Vine. So is the Vine an app that um, it's it's the vehicle to get it up there, or does Vine say help you do the editing part of it? Or Vine, so Vine, um, it says more than six seconds. A. Yep, I'll show you. Vine is a video camera app. So here it is, mm -hmm. just like a video camera. So when you put your finger on it, it starts recording. Okay. When you take your finger off, it stops, mm -hmm. and you only get six seconds. So I could shoot, you know, here. And so there's a little green bar that shows I got that much here. Then I'll shoot this much here. So you're basically editing in the camera. You're yep, in, the it's an in-camera assemble edit, I call it. So you, sh mm -hmm. you think of your story, what you want to do. Uh -huh. And I want to go here, and then I'll do that. And I'll say, like, this is my end. Finger on it. Yeah, there's the video. So it's all those, all those, you know, all those things assembled. Or you can just keep your finger on it for a straight six seconds and do a six sec second one. And now when I'm done, I hit next. You know, I can call it something. I'll just call it. Our on Vine, Twitter, and Facebook. And there it goes. So that's what it is. And some people don't know that it also saves to your photo. Um, your photo's going on, on the iPhone. So then you can take it and bring it on your... Does it work with the iPhone 4 or just the 5? Yep, it works on iPhone 4. So then you can take the videos, um, like today's show is in Boston, the Dropkick Murphys were here. I took maybe 10 of them over in all these ones, so I could actually go to here, move it over the Mac, go into my editing program, and putting them all together. Gotcha. I haven't done that yet, but you could do that. Mm -hmm. So that wonderful video is now shared. Probably all repeated the really.
Oh, hey everybody, this is Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.tv. And I want to take a moment to talk to you about social video, as opposed to scripted video where someone stands there and reads something and I, that almost put me to sleep. Social video is when I'm talking directly to the camera, to the viewer. You, I could just pinch your little face. And you get to really know what the other person's like because you are addressing the camera directly. You know, when you watch TV, what we're used to is people doing interviews and looking to the side and they're talking to a third person. That's not social. You know on TV, the only people that can look directly to the camera are reporters or the President of the United States. So, get social. And when you do social TV, it's more personal. And then the social part of it, in addition to you making a connection with the viewer, is that it can be shared. This is Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.tv. Okay. And that was used all the things I just said, the webcam, the mic, and the lighting, like I explained. And it looked, how did it look? That's right, for a webcam, it, and that was the sound, the audio technical uh, microphone too? Yep. Uh, okay, so you asked about a shotgun mic on the iPhone, and the, when the Today Show came to Pinnacle Hall, did anybody go see them? See um, that was pretty fun. Oh, I have actually a board. Today show in Boston. Um, so here's a vine. This is a second without just one straight shot. I okay, should turn the sound on. <laughs> shots that aren't close up, they're back so you can get a sense of the whole thing of what's happening. And let's see, this is from in Quincy Market in the center where the drop kick murky, murkies were. Here's one of those clips. <laughs> second line ever. It's just that perfect. Just repeats and repeats and repeats. I could listen to it all day. So that was a drop kick Murphy's. And anybody who was not there could follow me on Twitter and keep watching and see what's happening. And some of my friends were watching the Today Show at the same time. So they got the behind the scenes along with what was live. And then in the end, whoops. I did a lot. <laughs> uh, what I was going to say is the Today Show, it was called, the hashtag on that was Today in Boston. So as the morning progressed, the Today Show Twitter account, at Today Show, started retweeting like all my stuff. <laughs> and then they did a recap blog post in Storify, which brings in all media from all over the place. And they highlighted like my video, my photos. So when you went to todayshow.com, my videos are there and all my photos and everything. So that was a way that I got seen that way. It's so easy. Like I just don't have to do this stuff. David Merriman Scott calls it newsjacking. Do you know David Merriman Scott? So the next camera is um, this Olympus pen camera. It's smaller than a digital SLR. It's, a mic it's called a micro four thirds camera, so it's really a nice little size. <coughs> These lenses are interchangeable, which are really cool. You can change lenses. 
And then the neat thing about it is you can put attachments on the top, and this one attachment on the top lets you attach a microphone. So when I see a little camera like this and I can attach a microphone to, I get pretty excited. So the way I use this is on this bracket, like that. And then I have, here's the answer for a shotgun mic. So this is the Olympus Pen camera. And as a noted disclosure, they sent it to me to evaluate. This is the Sennheiser MKE 400 shotgun mic. And this is all on my gear page. And that goes right on here. So now when I use this, I have this is better than the on-camera mic because it's focusing the microphone right at the person. And then I take my LED light and put that on like this. So this is my this is my rig. So I'm going to turn the light on, sound, video, and that's really kind of compact. You taking a picture? <laughs> I can give you a good picture if you want. <laughs> Steve Garfield from stevegarfield.com. We're here at Boston Media Makers. We're going to do a quick roll call of everybody that's here. Hi, I'm Joe Silva. Peter Verheyen. Karen Kelly. Melinda Moses, and this is strategicmarketing.com. Joe Lindolabe. Paul Kim. <laughs> Jonathan Americaner. <laughs> so that's really great quality, too. So that was that. I want I want to show you. I want to put there on the table to show you this thing um, for good sound on an iPhone. It's called the iRig mic, and this plugs into the audio jack. And this is the mic. This is under hundred dollars, and you can get great audio quality. I can give this to the person that I'm interviewing and just have them hold it and then shoot from here. And it's a really good solution. I think it's around. 50, 60 bucks. I rate mine what that is. And then I'll do, and then I'll do um, video applications. Yeah, so um, ultimate list of video here. That's the list I was trying to go. That's linked to on the home page and everywhere. 
I just have listed here examples, camera, all the cameras, all the lights. That light is actually like a $500 light, but at this point in time, they make less expensive versions for under $100, similar LED light. And <clears throat> this link right there, HP Hat Store, that's where you get the link for the adapter for the iPhone to let you put in other kinds of mics. So that's HD Hat Store. And then all the mics. So that's that page. And, oh, applications. Okay, before we get to applications, there's one more type of camera. This is my um, Panasonic HD camera. And I have a wide angle lens on it, which helps out a lot. Like the normal lens would just give you a certain view, but the wide angle gives you a lot better view. I use it a lot of times when I want to hold it here and I want to get me and someone else. The reason this is an HD video camera, it's, it's great. If I put this and I'm using it at home on a tripod, I can have it and I can see how I'm framed. I can flip this around. So that's why this is really good. And then it also has a headphone jack. So if I'm shooting something, I want to monitor the sound as I'm shooting. Because um, if you have attached mics and things, batteries can die and clicking can happen. And you, but you wouldn't know it if you didn't have headphones. So if I really need to make sure that everything is going to be right, I want to monitor the sound of the headphone jack. So I'll use this on that type of shoot. Although when I'm using the iPhone, it's almost 100% accurate on sound. Really no other problem, but there's that difference. So for applications, there's Vine. It's like my new favorite. Um, so I went to Jimmy Fallon. Thursday night, Thursday morning, I went to the Today Show and got a behind the scenes tour. Did I show that? Well, so here I am doing a vine from inside the studio when you're doing the news. It was pretty awesome. Uh, for live streaming, has anyone done live video? Yep. What have you used? Uh, I actually did, but um, I don't know if I did a web show, so yep. I just kind of Perfect. <laughs> so, if, if you want to do a web show, Ustream yeah. is good. Ustream.com, you, you can do a live show. And they just announced a way to have pay-per-view. So you could, you know, if you have something that you think people might want to pay for, you can do that. Um, another good way of doing a video show with multi pe multiple people that are spread out, not in the same location as you, is a Google Plus video hangout. And there's now a YouTube app on the iPhone, which is, makes it very easy to use the iPhone to take a video and send it directly to YouTube. Um, what I use a lot of times for all the videos I showed you with that webcam on the Mac is QuickTime. You just open up QuickTime and record and then send it off. And in summary, then we can have questions. I'm a Steve Garfield, at Steve Garfield, so if you do any video things, please let me know so I can see them. If I like them, I'd be happy to share them and follow you guys on Twitter. Yep? What do you use for your blog? I really can't see what I'm saying. What do you use like as a blog? My blog? I use Blogger. Okay. Yep. And my blog is offonatangent.blogspot.com. <laughs> because I was like one of the first users of Blogger, and it still works for me, does everything I want, doesn't strip out any kind of video codes, like WordPress.com, which is similar to Blogger. When you try and embed some certain video things, they strip it out and won't let it embed. So I'm experimenting with every new video thing that comes out. Blogger is very, very forgiving. So that's why I'm on Blogger. And then on Facebook, Actually, for the book, facebook.com slash get seen. Any new things that come out in video, whether it's gear or applications or techniques, I come up on that Facebook page. You might want to follow that. And 1126. OK, so if anybody has any questions, we can. Yep. Um, sorry, I need to talk at 
this point, um, I kind of just advise in, in general for the different startups, like whether it be websites or marketing or, or video or, or just anything. Because I have experience in a, in a lot of things. So how do you, I don't know if you need to, do you track your online presence um, using any other sites? Or do you kind of no, I don't track anything anymore. I never actually cared about it. Like longer videos, actually, if you go to my site and look back, you'll see a lot more involved. I did a, I, a cooking show with Nina Simons. She's an Asian, really famous cookbook author, and we did a show. And we, I went on and shoots and had multi-camera shoots and people and chefs and cooking and all this crazy stuff and edited it and you know did that whole kind of thing. And that's good too. Um, I do tend to do shorter um, now just because easier and um, it's not that longer is bad, longer is good. I, if, if I'm interested in a thing and there's a whole long long video about it and it's interesting, I'll watch it. And, you know, I have watched really long ones, but a lot of times I'll, you'll look at a video and say, how long is this? How, how, long, how much time do they want for me? And if I want six seconds, I'm like, okay, you know, I'll give them six seconds. But like that Vine thing, that, that work is a short thing. So I guess I tend to prefer, prefer um, easier, shorter, less edited. Although um, I did do a project recently where I edited, and I loved it because I love all the layering and bringing in other videos and things. So um, I guess I like both. Yep. Do you? I think a lot of us here haven't had like a technical education on how to edit. How to it's a lot of teaching ourselves. Do you think that's still going to work for us down the line? I know I don't come from the from the my resume with like anything you haven't really done it a couple of times. You know? Yeah. How do you how do you present yourself as someone who's kind of dabbled and interested in that? That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just be honest, you know? Like what Rob said earlier, you just have a curiosity that you want to learn more. So if you um, you know, want to experiment with video, you might make a little blog that my experiments with video. And, and you know how to shoot, maybe edit a little, post it up, and you have to step up over the person who, if they say, well, show me your stuff, and they're like, well, I, you like they, they wouldn't have anything, and you would have a place to point someone to. So the, the answer is actually experimenting more and more, um, and there's good video tutorials online to learn. Like I, when I, I use Final Cut, and if I get stumped, I just, I actually go to Google and I say, how do I do this? And a video pops up and teaches me. And there's, there's training. You, know, you can just go to training class. If you really want to learn it, you can go to Final Cut Pro training. I actually went to, um, when the new Final Cut Pro 10 came out, um, there was a company that did training on that because it was so different. And I paid for it and went to it because I needed to learn. And I really, you know, wanted to, so I paid the money and learned that way. Yep. Uh, just a question on that. Every local company is demanding to do this as Final Cut Pro, and they have to be by law an education resource for the community. Okay. So if you call the station, I don't know if you've ever done I actually, the um, but they, will, they did it for something. Now that you mention it, I, that's where I initially learned yeah. video editing was in local cable. It's creepy education. Yep. This is a comment, and I don't know if I can uh, pretend it as a question, but I think you taught us two things, Steve. One is the concrete, specific stuff, which is so valuable. But for me, what's even more valuable about your lesson today is I think you model, and I'm going to embarrass you, I think you model the way we should be in the new world. And that is, in the old days, you have to learn to be aggressive and sell yourself and have an elevator speech, blah, blah, blah. 
you are kind, generous, uh, unassuming, confident. <laughs> you have the best way in this new world that we're in for people to be. So I've learned a ton from you, uh, apart from the concrete stuff. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you all for, for coming.